What in the void are you doing, human? Galen gasped as Joshua dragged the critically wounded Iconian pilot onto his own crippled ship, mere seconds after the relentless space battle left them both adrift and near death. The two beaten fighters floated aimlessly, nothing but the cold expanse of space surrounding their wrecked vessels. Sparks and debris spun lazily in the void, the only remnants of the fierce conflict that had nearly claimed both their lives. Joshua grunted as he hauled Galen's limp body into the airlock, the Iconian's breath coming in ragged wheezes. The human suit AI blared urgent warnings, informing him that Galen would die in minutes without immediate medical attention. Joshua gritted his teeth, shoving aside the long-simmering hatred between their species that screamed at him to let the Iconian perish. Enemy or not, he refused to let Galen die like this forgotten and alone in the unforgiving blackness of space. With a final heave, Joshua pulled Galen into the main cabin, sealing the airlock behind them. The interior of Joshua's ship was a mess of sparking wires and flickering lights, the life support system sputtering on their last legs. He laid Galen on the floor, quickly assessing the alien's injuries. Deep gashes marred the Iconian's gray skin, dark blood oozing from the wounds. Joshua ripped open the emergency med kit, his hands shaking as he fumbled for the unfamiliar tools. As he worked frantically to stabilize Galen, Joshua's mind raced with the potential consequences of his actions. Saving an Iconian, a sworn enemy of humanity, could brand him a traitor in the eyes of his own people. The war had raged for years, claiming countless lives on both sides, and here he was, trying to save one of them but something deep within Joshua refused to let him abandon Galen to certain death, no matter the cost. The distant flashes of the ongoing battle lit up the cockpit, a stark reminder of the chaos that still reigned outside the fragile sanctuary of the damaged ship. Joshua had no way of knowing which side was winning or if help was on the way. All he could do was focus on the task at hand, pouring every ounce of his skill and determination into keeping himself and Galen alive. In that moment, as the two battered soldiers clung to life in the face of overwhelming odds, the lines between enemy and ally blurred. Their survival now depended on each other, a tenuous bond forged in the crucible of war and desperation. The road ahead was uncertain, fraught with danger and the weight of their people's bitter history. But for now, all that mattered was the next breath, the next heartbeat, and the flicker of hope that they might both live to see another day. As the hours ticked by, Joshua kept a close eye on Galen's vital signs, adjusting the makeshift medical equipment as needed. The Iconian's breathing gradually stabilized, and the bleeding from his wounds slowed to a trickle. Joshua leaned back against the wall, exhaustion seeping into his bones. Suddenly, Galen's eyes snapped open, and he lurched upright, his gaze darting around the unfamiliar surroundings. Where am I? What have you done, human? He growled, his voice rough with pain and suspicion. Joshua held up his hands in a placating gesture. Easy, Galen. You're on my ship. I brought you here after the battle. You were badly wounded, and I couldn't just leave you out there to die. Galen's expression shifted from hostility to confusion as he processed Joshua's words. He glanced down at the bandages covering his injuries, realization dawning on his face. You, you saved my life. Why? Joshua shrugged, a wry smile tugging at his lips. I guess I'm not very good at being enemies. An uneasy silence stretched between them, the weight of their people's conflict hanging heavy in the air. Finally, Galen nodded slowly. I suppose I should thank you then but don't think this changes anything between our species. Of course not, Joshua replied, his tone tinged with sarcasm. But right now, we've got bigger problems. The ship's life support is barely holding together, and we need to find a way to signal for help. Galen struggled to his feet, wincing as the movement pulled at his wounds. Let me take a look. Iconian technology is far superior to your human systems. I might be able to patch something together. The two set to work, Joshua focusing on the damaged communication array while Galen delved into the ship's life support. As they labored side by side, the silence gradually gave way to cautious conversation. 
Why do your people hate us so much? Joshua asked, his hands deep in a tangle of wires. We're not trying to start a war. We just need resources to survive. Galen snorted, his long fingers flying over the control panel. You humans are like a plague, spreading across the galaxy and taking whatever you want. The Iconian Empire has stood for millennia, and we won't let you threaten our way of life. Joshua shook his head. But we're not a threat. We're just trying to find a place in the universe, just like you. Surely there must be a way for our species to coexist peacefully. Galen paused, considering Joshua's words. Perhaps. But it's not that simple. There's too much history. Too much bad blood between us. As they continued to work, sharing stories of their lives and experiences, a glimmer of understanding began to form. They were more alike than they had ever realized, both driven by a desire to protect their people and create a better future. Their tentative camaraderie was shattered by the sudden blare of proximity alarms. Joshua rushed to the sensor array, his heart sinking as he saw the unmistakable signature of an Iconian patrol ship approaching. They've found us, he said grimly, turning to Galen. What do we do now? Galen hesitated, torn between his duty to his people and the growing respect he felt for Joshua. He could reveal their location, ensuring their rescue and Joshua's capture, or he could remain silent, risking their lives but preserving the fragile trust between them. We do nothing, Galen said finally, his voice low. Let them pass. We'll find another way. Joshua nodded, relief flooding through him. Thank you, Galen. I know that wasn't an easy decision. As the patrol ship moved off, Joshua turned back to the communication system with new hope. We need to get a message out, not just for rescue, but to let our people know there's another way. This war has gone on long enough. Galen's eyes widened as he realized what Joshua was suggesting. You want to use this? Use us to broker a peace. It's impossible. Neither side will listen. Maybe, Joshua admitted. But we have to try. If we can just get them to the negotiating table, to see each other as more than enemies, maybe we can find a way forward. Galen was silent for a long moment, the weight of Joshua's words sinking in. Finally, he nodded. All right, human, let's do this. But if it goes wrong, it's on your head. Joshua grinned a spark of hope igniting in his chest. I'll take that chance, for both our peoples. Together they set to work, crafting a message that would be heard across the stars. A message of peace, of understanding, of a future where humans and Iconians could stand side by side as allies instead of enemies. It was a daunting task, fraught with risk and uncertainty. But as Joshua looked at Galen, seeing the purpose in the Iconian's eyes, he knew they had to try. For the sake of their species, for the sake of the galaxy, they would find a way to bridge the divide and end the war once and for all. The message sent, Joshua and Galen could only wait and hope that their words would be heard, that their unlikely friendship could be the catalyst for change, for a new era of peace and cooperation. As they sat in the flickering light of the damaged ship, the weight of their actions hanging over them, Joshua reached out and clasped Galen's shoulder. Whatever happens, he said softly, I'm glad we met, Galen. You've shown me that there's more to the Iconians than I ever believed possible. Galen's lips twitched in a faint smile, and you've proven that not all humans are the monsters we thought you were. Perhaps there is hope for us yet. With those words, a bond was forged between two soldiers. Two enemies turned allies a bond that would be tested in the days to come as they navigated the treacherous waters of diplomacy and war. But for now, in the quiet stillness of the ship, they allowed themselves a moment of peace, a moment to believe that their actions could make a difference, that their sacrifice could change the course of history. And so they waited, their fates intertwined their hopes resting on the power of understanding and the strength of an unlikely friendship forged in the heat of battle. The negotiations aboard the Iconian ship progressed with cautious optimism until chaos erupted. 
Alarms blared as human extremists stormed the vessel, led by Colonel Marcus Decker. Joshua's heart raced as he watched Decker's men seize Galen, pressing a weapon against the Iconian's head. Release all human prisoners now, or your alien friend dies, Decker snarled, his eyes wild with hatred. Before Joshua could respond, Captain Rolek burst into the room. We have another problem. Commander Zarek has taken control of a warship and set a collision course with us. He claims he'll destroy us all to stop these talks. Joshua's mind raced. Two crises, both threatening to unravel everything they'd worked for. He locked eyes with Galen, seeing the persistence in his friend's face despite the weapon at his temple. I'll handle Decker, Joshua said, stepping forward. Captain Rolek, can you deal with Zarak? Rolek nodded grimly. I have a team ready. We'll disable his ship without casualties if possible. Joshua approached Decker slowly, hands raised. Colonel, think about what you're doing. This war has cost us enough already. We have a chance for peace. Decker's grip on his weapon tightened. Peace? With these monsters? They've slaughtered thousands of our people. And we've killed just as many of theirs, Joshua countered. This cycle of violence has to end. You're a soldier, Colonel. You've seen the cost of this war firsthand. Do you really want to be responsible for reigniting it? As Joshua spoke, he noticed some of Decker's men shifting uncomfortably. Doubt crept into their eyes. Meanwhile, Galen subtly worked to sabotage the extremists' systems. His fingers danced across a hidden control panel, inputting commands that would give Rolex's team an edge against Zarek's forces. Aboard Zarek's ship, Rolex's team moved swiftly through the corridors. Thanks to Galen's sabotage, they encountered little resistance. They reached the bridge to find Zarek ranting about human treachery. Surrender, Commander, Rolek ordered. Your weapons are disabled. Don't force us to take more drastic measures. Back on the negotiation ship, Joshua continued to reason with Decker. Colonel, look at your men. They don't want this. We have a chance to build a future without constant fear and bloodshed. Don't throw that away. Decker's determination wavered. He glanced at his team, seeing the uncertainty in their faces. Slowly, he lowered his weapon. Stand down, he said quietly. As Galen was released, reports came in of Zarek's surrender. The immediate crisis had passed, but the damage was done. Trust, already fragile, had been shaken to its core. In the aftermath, Joshua and Galen stood side by side as their leaders condemned the actions of the extremists. They knew the road ahead would be difficult, but their friendship, forged in the crucible of conflict, gave them hope. We have a lot of work to do, Joshua said, looking at Galen. Galen nodded. Indeed. But if we can overcome our differences, perhaps our people can too. Together they prepared to face their greatest challenge yet, convincing two war-weary species to give peace a chance. The shuttle touched down on Earth with a soft thud, its engines whining as they powered down. Joshua took a deep breath, steeling himself for what lay ahead. Beside him, Galen shifted uncomfortably, his alien features drawing curious and hostile stares from the ground crew. Ready? Joshua asked, glancing at his Iconian friend. Galen nodded, his expression resolute, as I'll ever be. They stepped out onto the tarmac, flanked by the human diplomatic team. The air was thick with tension as they made their way to the waiting motorcade. Joshua couldn't help but notice the increased security presence, the nervous glances from officials who should have been welcoming them as heroes. Something was wrong. Their suspicions were confirmed when they arrived at the United Earth Government Headquarters. Instead of a hero's welcome, they were met with cold stares and thinly veiled hostility. Admiral Garrison stood at the center of it all, his hawk-like gaze fixed on Joshua and Galen. Welcome back, gentlemen, Garrison said, his voice dripping with sarcasm. I trust your little adventure with the enemy was enlightening. Joshua stepped forward overflowing at the implication. Admiral, with all due respect, Galen is not our enemy. He's here as a gesture of good faith to help us broker a lasting peace. Garrison's eyes narrowed. Peace? Is that what you call consorting with the very aliens who've slaughtered thousands of our people? Who even now plot our destruction? 
That's not true, Galen interjected, his normally calm demeanor slipping. My people want peace as much as yours do. We've all lost too much in this senseless war. The Admiral's lip curled in disgust. Silence, alien! You have no right to speak here! Joshua watched in horror as Garrison turned to address the gathered officials and media. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you today to expose a grave threat to our security. This man, Joshua Powell, has betrayed humanity by aiding and abetting our sworn enemy. He seeks to undermine our defenses, to leave us vulnerable to Iconian domination. Murmurs rippled through the crowd. Joshua felt a cold knot form in his stomach as he realized the depth of Garrison's deception. That's a lie, Joshua shouted, but his voice was drowned out by the rising clamor. Over the next few days, Joshua and Galen watched helplessly as Garrison's smear campaign gained traction. The Admiral's words played on the fears and prejudices of a war-weary population, painting Joshua as a traitor and Galen as a cunning infiltrator. Protests erupted across the globe. In some cities, crowds gathered to support the peace initiative, holding signs with slogans like Humans and Iconians United and Give Peace a Chance. But in others, the mood turned ugly. Effigies of Galen were burned, and anyone seen as sympathetic to the Iconians faced harassment and violence. Joshua paced their temporary quarters, frustration evident in every line of his body. We can't just sit here and let Garrison destroy everything we've worked for. Galen looked up from the data pad he'd been studying. What do you propose? A determined glint appeared in Joshua's eye. We need to take our message directly to the people. Both our people. No filters, no propaganda, just the truth. And so, they hatched their plan. Using contacts sympathetic to their cause, they arranged a simultaneous broadcast to Earth and the Iconian homeworld. As the cameras went live, Joshua felt the weight of billions of lives resting on his shoulders. People of Earth, people of Iconia, he began, his voice steady despite his racing heart. My name is Joshua Powell, and beside me stands my friend, Galen. Just a few weeks ago, we were enemies, locked in a war that has cost both our species dearly. But through chance and choice, we discovered a simple truth. We are not so different, you and I. Galen stepped forward, his alien features softened by the earnestness in his eyes. We have both seen the horrors of this war firsthand. We have lost friends, family, entire worlds to this conflict. But we stand before you today to say, it doesn't have to be this way. For the next hour, they shared their story, the battlefield that brought them together, the desperate fight for survival that forged their unlikely friendship. They spoke of the common hopes and fears that united their species and the senseless destruction that threatened to consume them all. As they spoke, something remarkable happened. Across two worlds, people began to listen, to hope, to believe that perhaps, just perhaps, peace was possible. But even as their message resonated with millions, darker forces were at work. In his command center, Admiral Garrison watched the broadcast with growing rage. Shut it down, he snarled to his subordinates, and issue an arrest warrant for Powell and the alien. They've sealed their fate. On the Iconian homeworld, Commander Zarek slipped away from his guards, his eyes gleaming with fanatical purpose. As Joshua and Galen's words echoed across the stars, he began to gather his forces, vowing to crush this fragile hope before it could take root. The broadcast ended. And for a moment, Joshua and Galen allowed themselves to hope. But that hope was short-lived. Alarms blared throughout the building, and the sounds of heavy boots echoed in the hallway. We've got to go, Joshua said, grabbing Galen's arm. Now! They slipped out a back entrance just as Garrison's troops burst into the studio. As they disappeared into the night, Joshua knew their real fight was just beginning. Somehow, they had to evade capture rally support, and find a way to stop both Garrison and Zarek before it was too late. The fate of two worlds hung in the balance, and time was running out. Joshua and Galen huddled in the shadows of a dilapidated warehouse, their breaths coming in short, ragged gasps. The distant sound of sirens pierced the night air, 
a constant reminder of the danger that lurked around every corner. We can't keep running forever, Galen whispered, his alien features etched with exhaustion. Joshua nodded grimly. I know, but we can't give up either. Too many people are counting on us. They'd spent weeks building a network of supporters, both human and Iconian, who believed in their vision of peace. But for every ally they gained, Garrison's propaganda machine churned out a dozen new enemies. We need to take action, Joshua said, his eyes blazing with grit. Something big enough to cut through Garrison's lies. Galen tilted his head, a gesture Joshua had come to recognize as curiosity. What do you propose? Joshua pulled out a crumpled piece of paper, smoothing it against his leg. I've got the layout of Garrison's command center. If we can get inside, we might be able to broadcast a message to the entire human fleet. Galen studied the crude map, his fingers tracing the lines. It's risky. The security will be tight. It's our only chance, Joshua insisted. We have to try. Under the cover of darkness, they made their way through the city dodging patrols and using every trick they'd learned to stay undetected. As they approached the towering structure of the command center, Joshua felt his heart pounding in his chest. They slipped inside through a maintenance hatch, their footsteps echoing in the empty corridors. Joshua led the way, guided by the memorized layout. Just as they reached the main communication hub, alarms blared to life. We've been made, Joshua shouted, drawing his weapon. Garrison's troops poured into the room, weapons raised. Joshua and Galen dove behind a bank of computers as energy blasts scorched the air around them. We're pinned down, Galen yelled over the chaos. Joshua popped up, returning fire. Keep them busy. I'll try to reach the broadcast controls. He scrambled across the floor, bullets whizzing past his head. His fingers flew over the keyboard, desperately trying to override the security protocols. Suddenly, Galen cried out in pain. Joshua turned to see his friend clutching his side, blue blood seeping between his fingers. Galen! Joshua abandoned the console, rushing to his friend's side. Go! Galen gasped, pushing him away. Finish the mission. It's our only hope. Joshua hesitated, torn between his duty and his loyalty. The sound of boots drew closer. In that moment, he made his choice. I'm not leaving you. Joshua said, gripping Galen's arm. We started this together. We'll finish it together. He dragged Galen behind a more secure position, returning fire to keep Garrison's men at bay. Through the comm system, he heard the Admiral's voice bark orders. Take them alive if possible, but don't let them escape. Joshua glanced at Galen, saw the pain etched on his friend's face. He knew they couldn't hold out much longer. Listen to me, Galen said, his voice weak. You have to go on. Our people need you. Promise me you'll keep fighting for peace. Tears welled up in Joshua's eyes. I promise, but I'm not leaving you here to die. He keyed his communicator. This is Joshua. We need immediate evac. Galen's hit, and we're surrounded. Static crackled. Then a voice responded. Copy that. Hold tight. We're on our way. Joshua fired again, buying precious seconds. He could hear the whine of an approaching shuttle, felt a surge of hope. Just a little longer, he urged Galen. The wall behind them exploded inward as their allies breached the building. In the chaos that followed, Joshua half-carried, half-dragged Galen to the waiting shuttle. As they lifted off, Joshua looked down at the command center, now swarming with Garrison's forces. He knew their fight was far from finished, but for now, they had survived. Galen's labored breathing beside him was a stark reminder of how close they'd come to failure. Joshua grasped his friend's hand, silently vowing to see their mission through, regardless of the cost. The shuttle streaked across the night sky, carrying them to safety and an uncertain future. In the distance, the first rays of dawn painted the horizon, a glimmer of hope in the darkness. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.